I went on thinking what a smart person I am drinking Diet Coke instead of regular Coke. And, and, and also I carried it into other things as well so that when I would sweeten my tea I'd sweeten it with, uh, with equal. And so when the uh, low-cal Kool-Aid hit the market uh, in I think it was April of 1983 I started using it. I would have a drink with a Diet Coke. During the day I would drink Diet Coke or, co or coffee decaffeinated all day long. I was never without one or the other. I drove 10 states. I always had a thermos of coffee with me. Very liberally treated with NutraSweet. I started out for doing blood draws and um, I, I did the blood draws. I like talking and everything. And so that was a good area for me to get into. I was always hyper and all that. And I would drink the diet sodas like crazy there because we had it at our disposal all the time. And so the further and further I got on, and then um, I did the Armed Forces Emergency ser Services with the disaster. We work with um, people overseas during war wartime. I grew up in a funeral home, in one of the oldest funeral homes in the South. Um, I didn't meet my husband until I was like 35, 36. And um, we went on to have a child, and my weight just went way out of and in the meantime, I had lost an eye in 87. I didn't meet him until 98. And um, I was told in 92 I had diabetes. Well, I tried staying off the sweets and the Coca-Cola and, you know, drinking the diet drinks on and off. And uh, I was a briefing attorney for a federal district judge, John H. Wood. The U.S. courthouse in San Antonio is named after him. and. Uh, then, after serving as his briefing attorney for two years, I was appointed by Bill Sessions as assistant U.S. attorney for the Western District of Texas and uh, served in that capacity for a little bit over four years. And during that time, I was the president of the Federal Bar Association and very active in uh, legal matters and things like that. Had I seen the chemical formula on this product, I would never have touched it. You know, the, the poisonous effect of methyl alcohol and, and its methyl esters are, are well known. And uh, within a day or two of my starting to drink it, not only did I feel the deterioration in my body, where I couldn't swim anymore and I didn't have the balance that I had and I was short of breath from a heart failure type of problem, but my wife saw all this much more objectively than I did. And she was a nurse and she said, Jim, get off of this. This is killing you. It's destroying you. Well, I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease back in 93 called lupus, SLE, systemic, which I had been dealing with. It was very severe to the point where I lost my job and eventually my insurance because over 40 doctors who saw me over a year's period kept doing one test after another. And every test came back negative. I've had someone since 1983. I can go back to as far as 1983, and possibly even before that. But I only remember doctors' offices and and you know the um, hospitalizations and things like that since 1983. Around, I'd say January of 2002, I started getting dizzy. I would go to the dryer to go take clothes out, and fall down and not know why. The reason I found out I had a brain tumor was I lost my voice during pollen season of the year 2000, or 98, excuse me. And um, in 98, my voice never came back from the pollen hoarseness that happened to me every year. So I went to a specialist at a local hospital here in Atlanta, and I said, all my friends' voices have come back, mine's gotten worse. And he went down my throat and he said, well, your left vocal cord is completely atrophied. And it's been my experience when I see a condition like this, that there's a brain tumor someplace that causes that. Also, the vision, um, having spots, and I, and I couldn't see. And I, I, I literally, I stopped driving because I did not feel comfortable behind a wheel. My endocrinologist told me that I have, the most likely have, multiple sclerosis. So he sent me to a neurologist. The neurologist told me that, yes, I do have a multiple sclerosis. I had been having double vision 
and my doctor scheduled me to have an MRI. And uh, we were waiting on the results, and I'll never forget it. It was, oh, maybe a week or two before Christmas. And uh, the doctor called, and I, I was just you know, ready to hear, well, you know, we couldn't find anything. Well, instead, he said, you have a brain tumor, and it's a rather large brain tumor. And within a couple of days, I had gone from being a two-mile-a-day swimmer to having such a toxic cardiomyopathy that I could hardly climb the stairs to my apartment. Over the next six weeks, I went through all of the personal hells of methyl alcohol poisoning and the neurotransmitter depletion uh, from the aspartame's phenylalanine content, and eventually ended up with a picture of Lou Gehrig disease. I still have a lot of pain, but she said, well, you'll live with pain. It's part of, even though it's in remission, you're going to have pain. So I went to Tampa finally found a rheumatologist that she had referred me to, and oddly enough, he did the same blood test and said, you never had lupus, you have advanced fibromyalgia. And I said, I just give up. So he said, well, I just don't think you ever had lupus, but for whatever reason, you're able to do what you're doing because of what she gave you, so let's just go ahead and treat you as if it's in remission, but I'm going to treat you for, for fibromyalgia. But detail is very, very important. You have to get spellings name, birth dates name, everything. And with me being diagnosed with the neural hearing loss, which has gotten significantly worse with it, I've been um, checked the last three years every six months, and it's gotten, gotten a lot worse. And now I'm taking, I have the two hearing aids that I have to have. I took the ice pops out thinking they were just the regular ones that I had been eating earlier. And my mother-in-law, had taken my little one over to her house. So my husband and I were in movies and we were going to have a date night, you know, just night out, you know, night to ourselves. And I pulled out the pops and went on to eat the four, three, four of the pops, the aspartame pops. Well, this was on a Saturday night. By four o'clock Sunday morning, I was digging holes in my hands from the itching. I was bleeding. I look like something out of a Vietnam camp from the bleeding. The doctor explained that one of the very probable side results would be a loss of short-term memory. Well, uh, I later learned that it had done a little bit more than that with me uh, in that it ruined my legal career. About then I tumbled, but only subconsciously. I said, well, you know, I, I'm just going to get off this artificial sweetener, and I, I didn't really even... Uh, consciously suspect NutraSweet, but when I got off it, then I started recovering. My doctors will not come out and absolutely put down in writing that this is caused by aspartame. They will not do it. But they'll give me an aside like this, thank God you're off NutraSweet. That's what they'll say, but they won't put it in my records. We were doing a shelter, and I was there, and I had the, the um, water, and that's all I did was drink water. And it was like, each bottle I drank, the worse I got. And I had nothing else um, to eat or anything. There was nothing, you know, nothing else that I was ingesting at all. So that was actually a blessing because I was able to narrow it down. There must be, this must be it. Um, and I went around and I had the bottle and I was asking everybody, what's in this bottle? What is aspartame? And, you know, everybody said they had no idea. Um, and then that one lady had uh, said, she goes, oh, and she goes, I've heard of it, she said. And then something kept flashing my mind and I remembered seeing the name somewhere. And I, I, like I said, I read all the time in magazines and all that. And I don't know if it was in Time or Newsweek or something, but I remember seeing an article and for some reason I keep saying that name. So uh, after I had uh, finished the shelter, I went and I was driving down the road in my library, I volunteer at the library also. And so I stopped in there to say hello and all that and see how everything was going. And they actually had power there. And I went in, I pulled it up on a computer at that time, I didn't have a computer. And I'd never searched anything in my life, I had no clue. I didn't have email and that's about it. Um, and I pulled up aspartame and I just, my eyes lit up, I started crying. I was. All those symptoms are 92 symptoms. I think, I think I counted 79 of those symptoms. I've been in the hospital or, or to the doctors in complaints over 50 times for each one of them, well over.